Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it is time for an update about this project. Um, this project to create what you can see here. This uh, it's a code editor. It is uh, it involves visualization. Um, this is essentially a programming environment uh, that's part of a larger project that I'm doing, uh, where you're. If you want to program a game, if you want to program a virtual reality application, uh, you want to do geometry programming or simulation programming, um, this is kind of meant for you. Um, and one thing that happens with these people who do this kind of thing, uh, you, the way that you often do it is you draw in your notebook a diagram uh, of what you want to happen. Um, you turn that diagram into algebra you turn that algebra into code, and then you type your code into your code editor, and you look at the, and you hope to get a result that you want. Usually you don't have a result that you want, or you want to extend the result that you want, and uh, debugging or adding features to what you've made involves going back to your picture. It involves uh, looking at your code again and connecting it with the picture that you draw in your, in your notebook. Uh, yeah, you can see me talk about this elsewhere. I'll leave a link in the description to where I talk about the outline for this project. You can also see Brett Victor and Alan Kay talk about this kind of thing. Um, I also, another goal of this is to make it so that uh, if you if you're if you're learning about algebra, you're learning about geometry. Um, instead of watching, like your best option for those is to watch a live coding video, in my opinion. Um, but live coding videos are kind of dry um, and they're kind of confusing. They're not aesthetically pleasing, certainly. Um, and yeah, I want to change that and I want to make live coding videos that are more fun to watch with this thing. Um, so, okay, uh, what have we got now at this point in the project? Well, um, it's kind of looking like code. You know, we've got an equal sign here. We've got a function call here. We've got some brackets. Um, it's still a very, it's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's a Turing complete language. Um, not that that's the main thing that I'm going for, but, um, uh, but you can, okay, so you've got variables. Uh, this is a bunch of variables. Um, uh, here are a pair of points. Um, here's a red, random red square, a line. Uh, this is sort of an angle. Um, with any of these things, uh, there's a way of manipulating what you can see. So with this angle, I can change the angle by doing this. Uh, with this line, I can move the line. I can also uh, change the angle of the line. Um, this red square is just like testing out visual, general visualization stuff. Um, and then football, like you can rotate it. Uh, you'll notice that like when I, so when I hover over these things, um, it kind of draws the picture behind uh, behind the boxes, and that's kind of stupid. That's obviously a bug. I'll get rid of that eventually. Um, when I hover over it, obviously we're getting this picture. Uh, if you, this thing on the right here, it's the same thing, um, and that allows you to have uh, more than one view, more than one zoomed in view on the variable that you might be interested in. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I can change the positions of these points. Um, I can, uh, with, with all of these things, uh, you'll notice that their box has a certain color. So this 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 box is purple, um, and that means that if I type the letter P, um, then space bar, then we get another copy of that variable. So there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. Um, and if I then, you know, change the position of this point, then all of the, the positions of all of these change as well, because they're all the same thing. Um, Okay, and you also have um, you also have uh, functions that you can apply. Uh, you you can't change the so I can you know hover over this uh, copy of the variable again. Um, in this case, the the yellow dot is the output of applying this function to this to this variable, um, and I get them visualized here together. Um, I can't change the position, you know, I'm clicking right now and I can't change the posi position of the yellow dot. That's not very surprising because the position of the yellow dot is determined by the position of this, uh, of this dot and the reverse function. Okay, um, what we have here is a pair of points uh, that are having a certain uh, operation applied to them that results in a line. 
um, this line is precisely uh, the line that goes through these two points. Um, this uh, this project is in significant part, uh, you know, it's significantly focused on this thing called geometric algebra. Um, this little operation here is called the join, um, and here you're taking the join of this point and this point. Um, uh, yeah, you can see me talk about that more elsewhere. Um, so here you have uh, a kind of more interesting thing. Uh, so once again, so we've got this function uh, that is currently built in. It shouldn't be built in. I don't have the ability to write functions in this pro in in this uh, language yet. Um, that's hopefully coming soon. Hopefully it won't be too hard. Uh, but yeah, so this is a built-in function, as is are these two. Um, reflect horizontally. It's just meant to be an example, um, and it takes this. Um, it takes this, uh, you know, this input uh, point, and it reflects it in, you know, reflects it horizontally. Uh, it gives this output point the the blue dot, um, and then the let's let's give ourselves a better view. Um, this editor doesn't have many creature like they don't. It doesn't have many, you know, home comforts like you can't, you know, do control backspace to delete a line or anything like that. Um, yeah, the, the, those all will be in there, in there eventually. I don't have, I don't have control Z, I don't have control C, I don't have control V. Um, but yeah, you know, baby steps. Um, so what we have here is the same function applied to, um, so this picture of the globe, so that is orange, okay, orange, gray, yeah. And uh, you can, you know, uh, so uh, the, the, you can have multiple, multiple, um, multiple colors in a in a variable name. So if I type, you know, gray, uh, blue, orange, uh, that gives me this one, uh, and it doesn't matter the the order that you type them in. So blue, gray, orange gives me the same thing. Um, so yeah, so this this globe is um, orange, gray. So there it is. Uh, it, it, it applies the same function, you know, because because th th this looks a bit glitchy. It's because you know it's it's taking the it's projecting both this 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 one and this one uh, at the same time, and that's causing Z fighting. Um, so you get this uh, nasty fuzziness. Um, that's a problem, of course. But I but I quite like this approach where it kind of. By superimposing every variable in a line, it kind of creates a diagram of what the line is doing. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, what is this? Um, so you're reflecting horizontally, you're taking this globe and you're reflecting it horizontally. Um, that's interesting because it's the same, it's, the, it's exactly the same function, um, and it's a, here it's taking one, one, one point um, and it, it compiles this to JavaScript because that point is represented by an array. Um, and then it just applies that function to the array and gives you the output. Here you've got uh, the same function in some sense applied to every point in the mesh. Um, the mesh being, you know, the globe itself. Um, with, so the, and this is apply this is compiling to GLSL and WebGL slash JavaScript, which uh, well, it's taken a bloody long time to do that. And um, under the hood, it's a tiny bit messy, but I think that this is actually quite useful um, and mathematically can be made rigorous and maybe quite useful for general geometry programming when you want to move a whole mesh around but you want to see yeah you want to see a point on the mesh um and that's yeah that's useful to for debugging because you know a whole every if you think about every point on the mesh at the same time that's quite difficult and if the mesh does something weird you maybe don't know why um seeing one how how the function applies to one point is good um it, it will help you understand what's going on um uh, yeah, yeah. So, and it's it's also a generally a more mathematics way of looking at a function as opposed to a, um, as opposed to a 
computer science kind of way of looking at a function. Um, yeah, it, it, like I said, it's a bit messy. It's a bit hacked together under the hood, uh, but whatever. It, I, I, I think it, this is the right way to go for now. Um, so, okay, like, I, I started this project with um, just wanting to have like programming by diagram and I came upon this idea of, of pictograms and I, I think it's working quite well. It, it is achieving the goal of like, if you watch, um, if you imagine watching somebody code this way and it's a live coding stream that you're watching, then that's that, that'll be quite entertaining and you, you'll get to like, because the pictures are kind of what is in the head of the live coding programmer. Um, and you get a more direct insight into that. Um, it's, it's nice to change something and see the results. I, I haven't used this to program anything non-trivial yet. Um, but, but you know, it, debug visualizations are very important and, and, and I, yeah, I'm hopeful about this. Um, when I started this project, I it was it was all about geometric algebra, and um, I kind of wanted to mathematically circumscribe and enumerate every single possible visualization that exists. I wrote like tons of notes on that. That was a that was a that was a bad idea. Um, uh, that's premature generalization, and so I've gotten I've I've taken a different approach. Uh, which you can see the beginnings of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to use this to make a video about pro about um, map projections. So, you, okay, so you know, this is an example of a map projection. Um, you take the surface of the globe and you flatten it somehow. There's there's loads and loads of ways of doing it, and they're all very interesting. They're all you know the the variety of them is a nice source of like ooh here's some cool maths. Here's some you know varied uh, varied pictures, um, and you know all of these different map projections get you know used in human contexts in different ways. Um, and but if you if you get interested in these uh, map projections and you want to compare them, um, if you're a kind of technically minded person, you go to the Wikipedia article, you get to see the pictures. Um, but you know eventually you hit this part of the article, and you know if you have a background in maths, um, if you've worked with it a lot, then yeah you can kind of read that. But uh, well, it's not much fun, and um, it's hard to see why, for example, you know, a certain formula makes it so that uh, the map is equal area, or it's not equal area, um, or it's angle preserving, something like this. So I want to make a video about that, where you know you get to see. It. There's a lot of videos out there already about map projections, but um, you get. To, I, I want to make one where you get to see like the you see the formulae. Um, but you also see the details of how that how it works, um, which is possibly less eh, less clickbaity, like yeah. But but whatever. Um, it's a good way of of testing this testing this language. Um, and that and that's and that's a it's a it's a good short move in the short term because like premature generalization is hard or impossible. Um, what you really want is a customer. You want somebody who, you want a use case. You want, oh, I know that this programming language, this environment is gonna be used in, at least in this way. I don't know all the ways that it's gonna be used in, but if I've got this one example, then that can motivate me for thinking about this. And then eventually when it does get used in a more flex, in, in, a, in a broader context, you can just add stuff to what you already have. Um, yeah. Okay, anything else to say? Uh, so this, uh, I used to have, um, so, so you, it's not, is it going to be completely visual? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, probably not. So I've got, you know, I've got a lot of pictures here. Um, I've got some, you know, words as well. So this is a function visualized in the ordinary way that you visualize a function, which is as a name. Um, 
I, you know, I've thought about, and originally, if you look at the first update video I did, um, every function, you know, was visualized using like a graph. That might be a bad call because, you know, functions get applied in all sorts of ways. Um, and, you know, really, it, it might be unnecessary to see the graph. Like what, so what, so what is this thing, the reverse operation? Um, you know, you, uh, it kind of looks as though it's being just like mirrored around the origin. Um, it's a bit more complicated than that. Um, but, but, but the point I was going to make is that the function is what the function does, right? Uh, and if you, and the, you already have this nice thing going on where you can change the input to the function and see what the result is. And that, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good thing to have and tells you what the function does. Um, I used to have automatic naming. I don't think I'm going to have that anymore. So the, what, what happens now is that, well, unless it's buggy, we'll see. Um, if you use a name that doesn't exist yet, so it's blue, blue, gray, white. Yeah. Okay. So it does work. Um, so that creates uh, blue, gray, white. Do you know what? Actually, there should be, okay, it's not working. There should be a question mark in here because it's like an undefined variable. And then you'd, you know, you'd go like, oh yeah, now it's crashed because I wrote the equal sign. Um, uh, yeah. So you're going to, you're going to make your own names. Um, previously I had this automatic naming system that was, well, it was very hard to maintain. Um, it was really rat holing me. Maybe I'll bring that back. Maybe I will make it so that, um, all things get named automatically. Probably that would be something to get used to for the programmers. And so it's, it's a risk for me to work on that. So I won't work on it. Um, you also used to have this output column thing, um, where, because it's, yeah, I got rid of that as well. I mean, everybody's used to this equal symbol. I was kind of, it, it, it felt like I was selling out when I used any kind of, um, symbol whatsoever. Uh, but Hey, it's probably, it's, a, it's probably the right call for now. Um, anything else? So I, I've transitioned away from three JS. Um, the previous, uh, thing was pre was very dependent on that, which was, yeah, which is silly because this, this is getting compiled to, to WebGL and JavaScript. Um, and so for that, if nothing else, it makes sense to roll my own, uh, three JS, but sometimes I wish I still had three JS. Okay. Um, and what, one last thing, um, you'll pre I've started using something called projective geometric algebra instead of what we might call vanilla geometric algebra or real geometric algebra. Um, yeah, the pre previous video, uh, vectors were visualized as arrows. You pro you won't really see that in this, uh, yeah. I've been sold by a guy called uh, Stephen DeKennick. Um, but I might go, I might uh, bring back the sort of vanilla geometric algebra. Um, yeah, and that's about everything. Uh, hope that was um, interesting and see you in the next one.